So level one of that chessboard. Well, these uh, level one is about th this is this is how we're taught to look at the chessboard. And, uh, you know, this is how I begin this course with the assumptions, not only in political science. And that's why I say this is probably the last place, you know, in the in the field of political science you, you'd, you'd want to go if you'd want to understand uh, what's rolling out in the world today. But I think it's the university system in general. These are the assumptions. Uh, through the democratic, pro this is how you're going to understand the world. If you're going to look at this big chessboard, you're going to understand it through the democratic process. At the national level, uh, events are unfolding um, accidentally, willy-nilly, and uh, it's, it's within the guise of materialism. If we can't see it, purportedly weigh it, we don't want to make or cannot make sense of it. And we've already looked at through the democratic process. And it's almost a no brainer that people still believe that um, this is the worldview that somehow the laws that we have and the products that we buy, you know, the world that we sort of negotiate our way through are a product of our own preferences. Cause right, it's democratic and we make the, you know, we, we put these rulers in charge and we go to the store and we get to buy whatever we choose in the store. And, you know, that's why we went through thinkers like Bernays and Lippmann saying it's democracy so perfect for letting people think that they're masters of their own lives. And I'm not saying human beings don't have free will. That's not where I'm going from this. I began by saying, look, uh, the, the definition of democracy is a system that has um, regular meaningful elections where people elect these representatives who create laws hopefully in the interest of the people that um, put them in power. Well, ever since the advent of the two-party system, it's, you don't have to look or think too hard. There's other powers <laughs> give you a choice of these characters. And we look, you know, we think about the left-right paradigm. So at the end of the day, we get people that are essentially giving us the same core policies, especially over the last 120 years, uh, whether you're right and left, and this is the same in all democracies you're going to get pushed toward this new world order. You're going to have your increasing trade agreements, decreasing of sovereignty, Western manufacturing powers, a power being um, manufacturing power being displaced over into, you know, the Southeast Asia and China and so forth. So why, why is this happening? If people, you know, what sane people would say, okay, just work with me here. <laughs> Think about just the insanity of what's going on in the world today. We're told that we have these enemies, right, over in the Middle East. So we increasingly are under surveillance and, you know, police state. Yet at the same time, they're they're coming into Europe and so forth. Why? Like if they're supposed to be the enemy, why are we supposed to have an orphan? Do you see the absurdity of this? What rational person in Sweden or Germany or Spain would sit down and say, you know what? They're the enemy. We're going to pay more taxes and have a police state put around us. And then at the same time, have them flood into our country. Does that make any sense? Would, it, would a rational decision maker go to the polls and think, yeah, they're the enemy. Send them on over here. It, you see, that's, so it's, it's, it's beyond absurdity, but yet in a day-to-day -day discourse, we turn on the television, we go to our schools, and we see, you know, democracy is written all over the textbook, and red, white, and blue. And we don't, you know, we don't see that it's a system of, of biopolitical mind control. And so um, what we can see, you know, so evidence, there's no evidence, and you know, we can look at the Princeton review or the other studies. I said, there's no empirical evidence that what people desire comes back to them in the public policies that come out of our capitalist and democratic institutions, no correlation, zero. However, the dominant elite or the oligarchs, what they want, 100% statistical correlation. So you can just lay this on people, this empirical evidence, and half of their mind will go, yeah, I know that's true. But then they continue, you know, talking about what Trump did and on and on. And so there is this system that creates double think. You are free. But in fact, the lingo of the oligarchs, you know, you you we're, we're going to give you a system that you're going to love your servitude and believe you're free and so forth. So 
democratic process, the national level, again, when you just, even if you just look at standard political discourse and analysis, you look at interest groups, international corporations that belong to no particular and have no, they're the ones that through um, lobbying, they're the ones really pushing through the legislations in our, in our capitals. And, you know, is that hard to see? So somebody at the international level is really actually producing um, most of the public, po all of the fricking public policy, let's get real. So why are you looking at it? So, you know, and we get a little glimpse into it when you talk about the Brzezinski's of the world, that there are these geostrategic planners that are looking at a, a bigger game board beyond things at the national level. Um, accidental unrolling of history. When you live in a democracy, and you, your preferences, you believe, are, are, are bringing you these these laws and your preferences are deciding what films are playing in the movie theater um, be, because you know every third film is going to deal with sexuality and, and gender issues because you know because we just can't see enough of transgender themes running through our popular culture because we want to see them and that's why they're coming at us and I think even the average person, you know, a couple of years ago, when we started talking about, you know, some kind of constitutional freedom to decide what bathroom we go into, I think even the thickest of us started going like, are these our preferences? Or is there some, is there some, perhaps some transnational actors outside of the democratic process, outside of the national level going, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're creating a certain kind of people and we're pushing this stuff on you. So I think people are getting a little bit wise to this. Um, so it appears to be a natural unfolding of our own preferences. But as Lippmann, Bernays and all the other planners, we tell you about the ideas to plant those ideas in you so that you think you're own. And when you present this information, for example, in a um, university lecture about that, that people's preferences aren't their own, people get um, barriers up immediately. They don't like to hear that at all. None of us, we, we firmly believe, as Tuckville noted, that we are our own sovereigns. We are kings. We are um, gods. So finally, naturalism, and this is going to be hard for some people to break, but we've been programmed, especially since the Darwinian revolution and um, weaponized biology, that there, that there exists no other plane of existence beyond the material realm. And I at least want the option, um, because we can't speak about this at the university, to introduce esoterics, uh, esoterics and even a biblical view to kind of help us explain the unfolding of events that are happening before us. So when we leave the institution, um, it's been cited a number of times, you get these square caps that these are the classic um, Masonic caps that, you know, they're, they're considered the builder, right? The, the, so it's the left-hand path. They're, they're building their own salvation. They're building their way to ascension. And part of it is to control the minds and hearts of people. So at the university, they tell you what is a kosher and what is not. And so if somebody, you know, you got that for your degree and you know everything. So if somebody lays something on you, some information about the world, go out there and try it. Go out there and try it to your average person. Tell, tell them that some kind of outcome, you know, you can look at this like X plus Y equals outcome. You're going to play with these uh, vari <laughs> variables over here. That one of the variables you want to introduce in a conversation is that some of this, what's going on in the world might happen outside the democratic process. Try that. Some, something might happen beyond the national level. Something might happen beyond the material or something might be planned that's actually occurring and you get the shutdown because they have a degree and it, somebody at school would have told them about that. But nobody tells them that if professors attempt to speak about this, it's <laughs> there's the door. Um, and then when you are not serving in that capacity, it's like you're messed up because you, you, you would be in here talking about um, decisions happening at the state level, uh, accidental view of history. And so you get the idea. And we're trained in our mind not to celebrate people that want to break the discourse and shed light on events in the world. 1984, Tuckville, that's what they're talking about, um, that 
people talk about a type of truth, but fundamental truth is something that they have been inculcated to um, despise. So matrix, what is, what is a Gombin talking about with a hidden matrix of control? Well, the word matrix, there's several definitions from different disciplines, but um, something within or from which something else originates, develops, or takes the form. So we look at true power today, there's something beneath democracy. And that's what Agamben's getting at, that there's a real germ of totalitarianism because the illusion of control in the individual is the ultimate control. Um, hidden matrix, the word hidden, it's kept out of sight or concealed or you know, could say occulted. And, um, and, and I want to explore that.